and we back today we're trying to pull off something that has never been done in nba history at least since they start tracking this stuff there has never been a team that was number one in offense and number one in defense in the same season which is crazy I didn't believe it myself, so I went back to our history just to double check. Here are the stats for the best regular season team in the history of basketball. 73-9 uh, Golden State Warriors were number one in offense, but in defense, according to offensive and defensive rating, they were number five. If you're wondering about the other best team in NBA history, uh, the, the tracking error goes back only only to 1996. And obviously the big year is 1996, 1995-1996. Five, so they could have done it, the uh, 96 Bulls, but... According to this, they didn't. But today, we're going to put together that team. We're rebuilding the team to end up number one in offense and defense according to offensive and defense rating. We have three years to try to get it done. Leave a like, subscribe. Let's get into it. Of course, we got to start off by randomly select our team like we always do. We're going to stop at three and two and in one. We're running with the 76ers. All right, it's just where we started. The 76ers are going to have pick number six, and pick number six is getting us Jason Tatum would be my guess. I don't know if that's right. We gonna see. My bad. I got Steph Curry, which is pretty good. Obviously, Steph Curry's good enough to be a, a engine of the best offense in the league, and not as bad on defense where he's gonna tank our defense. So that's great. We also get Aaron Gordon, Vucevic, Derek White. We they actually drafted a pretty defensive minded team. This man, uh, Delon Wright has pretty good badges, like some really good defensive badges. I just drafted him in a league that I'm in, and uh, pr pr pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, but I don't know if he's staying around. But uh, this team is good enough to be okay. That's not what we want. We want to try to assemble the best two-way players in all of basketball, right? Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, these, these are guys that can win DPO-wise and also be the MVP offensively. We have guys like Jimmy Butler who have A-plus on defense. Kawhi Leonard, you know, th those are the guys we're, we're targeting. Anthony Davis, you know, there are a lot of great dudes, but we also need some underrated guys, some some guys that probably won't be as expensive, but we know that they can help on one of the two sides. I'm kind of prioritizing defense because I feel like with Steph Curry being on the roster, we're going to have one of the top offenses. So the goal is really to try to put together the best defense we can and let the rest fall into play. Like OG Ananobi helps on everything. He can shoot and he can defend. Mikel Bridges, A plus three and A plus prim D. Come on, man. That is a guy that we need. All right, but let's prioritize getting the secondary star, whoever that may be. Um, Giannis plays for the Blazers. I don't think we're going to have the assets to get Giannis. I guess it really depends on what our picks are looking like. And they're one and a half stars, so they are worthless. And we didn't draft a young team, so there's no, like, crazy great assets that we have. So, matter of fact, I'm not even going to try to do it. We don't have the assets to get Giannis, at least yet. You know, you, you know things could change. I just want to do Trey find our top two dudes in a first round pick just to see what the vibes are like. And all-time low. The, the vibes are at all-time low. There's our guy, Mikael Bridges, but that's two first-round picks plus our two best players. That's not worth if you ask me. Okay, okay, okay. We could trade for Bam. I Basically, what I've been doing is going reverse trade finder on all of the star players. Just kind of figure out where the market really is. Uh, they'll give us a first-round pick and LeBron against Steph Curry. Uh, we, we don't, we'd rather just keep Steph Curry because, again, I don't know if we're going to get it done in the first season. And that boy, Braun, be trying to retire sometimes. So I'm not, I'm not trading for a dude that's about to retire, maybe. So I've just been doing this for every one of the top players in the league just to kind of get a feel, a gauge of where the eyes are at. Everybody has said, hey, if you want our best player, give us Steph Curry, which, again, is understandable. Bam is the one dude that we don't need to give up our best player. I mean, they, they're they going to ask, but we don't need to give up our best player to get Bam, potentially. So that's solid. But Bam is also a guy that I feel like is always going to be there. So we don't need to jump the gun on that just yet. We need this first trade, the first mega trade, to be for one of these three type of dudes. And then the Mikael Bridges trade could come later down the line. I mean, I could try to do, like, some consolidation trades like Jeremiah Robinson Earl plus Hayward Highsmith to go get a young player or a first round pick that might be okay in value jay shante top three uh protected pick from the bulls that's a that's a good start that's a very good first trade of the video there's mikhail bridges wow that is not that is perfect there's lonzo ball too but i, I think we got to go mikhail bridges here boom all right so that's easy I, I thought we were gonna get him later but it just popped up right there and low key i'm trying to think maybe we flip him to get him back later him and brucey brown and this Bulls first round pick that we got. See, we could get like Kyrie Irving. I mean, obviously that doesn't help our challenge too much, but like as a player that we can get and flip, that doesn't hurt, but we're not gonna do it. Mikhail might be here to stay. Aaron Gordon and Bruce, Aaron Gordon and, look at the, we got 
some good defensive players, man. I got to admit that Eric Gordon is a player that I would love to keep, but he's our most valuable asset right now. Like, boom, flip him to Pascal Siakam, and we use Pascal Siakam in a future trade to go get one of the top guys. I, I hate to do it, you know? I think Eric Gordon is the type of dude that we want for this type of video, but it's just, it, it didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? It didn't work out exactly the way we wanted. De'Aaron Fox and DeMar DeRozan, they say no to this. Do you want Dayron Sharp? What did it say? Hon it says, honestly, this honestly leaves us away too many players at the center. Oh, okay, okay. We won't get you Dayron Sharp then. We'll give you, um, uh, uh, yeah. we give you, we give you Frank Jackson. They're not interested. Okay, a couple seconds. A couple seconds. Yes, yes, yes. A couple seconds. No, okay, great. We're going to trade for Demontis Sabonis. All right, Demontis Sabonis' contract is not that bad. Um, Actually, he signed an, an extension. I forgot about that. It's $30 million. It was not $30 million last year. Oh, my God. I forgot it was $30 million. Now you pair these two together. That's almost $70 million in salary. It's, yeah, it's not going to be a lot of the trades out of the... Out. Well, Drew Holiday and Jeremy Grant. It's not terrible, but it's not what we want either. Forgot he signed that new money, man. Dang. I thought I was finessing, but I was not. Anthony Edwards, welcome to the team. Now, Anthony Edwards is the type of player that could stay potentially or be flipped, but him being on $13 million makes me think that we might keep him, run him at the two, Mikhail at the three, and then figure out the rest later. But I do need to try it to see if we could get one of the top end dudes. The answer is no to that right now. But if I go talk to, who do I want to prioritize here? I mean, obviously getting Joel Embiid would be great, but these guys have maxed out value, which we just don't have the assets for, I don't think. Kawhi's a little bit less than that because he's older. So maybe it is going to talk to the Bucks about Kawhi. We throw them Anthony Edwards, and then we throw them Pascal Siakam as the two trade pieces. They give us back uh, Jabari Walker. They're going to say no to this. But do we do we throw Anthony Edwards plus four first-round picks for Kawhi Leonard? Oh, it, okay. It was three. Uh, yeah. Woo! Defensively, our wings are on top. Now we need to find some secretly great defensive centers that won't cost a lot of money like Nicholas Claxton. Nicholas Claxton is perfect for this video. And the same thing at the power four position, somebody that's sneakily good, but cheap. I don't know if Claxton still has that thing. I just know last year, anytime you traded for, for Claxton, he was upset uh, because of his touches or whatever. I hope that's not the case this year. Because, come on, you, like, we shouldn't be giving you dump downs. You know, you, you get what you can get. But we'll see. We'll see. Go back to talk to them after signing up some new players. They got a nice little team over here, too, in, uh, in Portland. We give them Trey Murphy the third. We also give them Jay Sean Tate. Money matches. They say no. We only have one first-round pick left and a bunch of seconds. We're willing to give up all the seconds for Nicholas Claxton. He's at, he is the perfect center for what we're trying to do right now. He's cheap. He's great at what he does. Okay, great. Great. Switchability at the five is what we need. Okay. Offensively, do we believe that Kawhi Leonard, Mikel Bridges, and Steph Curry could do that? Probably, right? I, I shouldn't think about offense at all because offense is set. That's, I feel offense is set with Steph Curry. You feel me? But, but we, not just have, we don't have to just be good. We have to be the best, which is something I got to keep thinking about. It's not being good offensively. It's about being the best offensively. And I just got a new strategy just popped into my head right here, right now. Offensive rebounder. Let me see what Walker Kessler is right now with the offensive rebounder. It is a 91. Welcome to the team. Right? More possessions, more shot attempts. We move Claxton to the four, so now we're running big ball. And Nicholas Claxton's offensive rebound is probably low, low key. Yeah, it's not, it's not great, but it's still gonna be good, better than the average power four. So right now, our starting lineup looks like this. Defensively, we look stout. It looks like we should be able to get some um, offensive boards and get some extra possessions, right, for Steph Curry. Let me just make sure that Claxton has a secondary position as a center. Cool. Now we build out a bench. And I want at least one player on my bench to be a ride or die. Let me go get a couple shots up type dude. You know those type of dudes. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Jordan Clarkson type of dude. I don't think we're going to end up getting Jordan Clarkson. But again, Sim John, Sim John Wall still has 19 badges. And he be showcasing those badges in simulation. Stop playing with John Wall, bro. Get that man a real contract. Quentin Grimes. I also drafted him in the league. His jump shot is awful. But his stats, he's a good three-point shooter, and that perimeter, perimeter defense is above average, too. So coming off the bench to have him and Lou Dort as of right now on our wings, like, again, defensively, we should be really, really good. But we also need to get a guy that can score, score, you know? So one thing I need to do is go try to get more first-round picks because I just talked about Lou Dort. Brother's not safe. Brother is not safe whatsoever. You know, he's got like $18 million in contract, and we, use, we can get Jordan Clarkson with that $18 million in contract, you know? So I said I wanted a Jordan Clarkson type dude. We might end up with him. Or is it it's 15 million? But we also have Javon Carter, which makes it 21 million. 
But a, ooh, Kevin Herter, Derek White defensively is nice. All right, those trade packages will look, look a lot better once we get some extra first round draft capital. So Iggy, Jabari Walker, I'm sorry, y'all got to get flipped for whoa uh mason plumley and mason plumley can play for us actually mason plumley can actually play for us a playmaking power a play, playmaking center don't ask me to shoot no free throws but a playmaking center would take that first round pick and shake milton is easy trade to do another first round pick and we get moose mike muscala the guy that is responsible for what is he responsible for tyrese maxi playing for the 76ers is, is my history right i think it's something like that lonzo ball wow Lonzo Ball is not going to be crazy offensively, but he should shoot about 40% from three. And we know that defense is going to be right. Or we can go get our guy, Aaron, who, again, I wanted to keep. And we could just go snag him back. All right, Aaron Gordon is the deal. That's not the shot creator I said I wanted off the bench. But Aaron Gordon is just going to be so nice for our team, bro. He could start. Nicholas Claxton could start. It doesn't matter. We have two really good power forwards right now. And again, we still have room to maybe get that shot creator. I mean, he's not a shot creator, but he's a shot maker. Trey Murphy the third. A trade up for our guy Tari Eason in the first round pick. Tari's one of those dudes that I have not traded for much in 2K, which I probably should because he's nice. Uh, but, you know, he's got to get off the team right now. Desmond Bain. Boom. There we go. There we go. That's what we needed. That's exactly what the bench right now. Let's make it a 10 man rotation. We can have Quinn Grimes basically be a backup small four more than a shooting guard. He's 6'5". He, he can def Oh, my God. He goes up to an 80 overall as a small four. Hold on. We own to something. Is this offensively going to be good enough? Because the front court, obviously, nobody here is creating their own shot or anything like that. We're really banking on the fact that these guys can rebound. Aaron Gordon, Desmond Bain, Quentin Grimes, Mason Plumley, and John Wall off the bench is really, really good. The starters, I think, has the potential to be really, really good. The one thing is, if we don't do it this first year... Ooh, that's, that's good offense, but maybe not good defense. If we don't do it this first year, we got to trade Kawhi Leonard because he's going to regress. We have to trade him this offseason. Let's get through the first couple weeks. Um, I need us to hold somebody to under 100. Oh, my God. Look at that first, that game right here. 74 points. 74 points in an NBA game is ridiculous. Good defense, boys. The offense is there. I ain't worried about the offense no more. It's really just the defense right now because we've given up a lot of points through the first week or so so we'll basically use this offensive rating right now it's us defensive rating it's not us we're second behind this pistons team who has marcus smart clay thompson john isaac yes this team should be very good defensively it should be you're right uh, at least the top five the, the bench is kind of weak but who knows i'm gonna go to round the trade deadline and maybe we we're gonna have to make some adjustments i don't know to round the trade deadline and right now we are full point behind plus some the New York Knicks defensive. They have a really defensive backcourt. Somehow Vucevic continues. Oh, they got Alex Caruso and Denny Abdiya. Oh, they got a good defensive team. Never mind. I was going to say Vucevic continues to be the starting center on good defensive teams. Like in real life with the Bulls. They were number five defensively with him there. We have to make some adjustments. And I think our, one of our adjustments is stealing a player from them. Right? If we take OG Ananobi away from them then their defense should fall off at least a little bit. Even if we just take Alex Caruso who, who's not you know, offensively, he's not there. But, like, his defense off the bench is impactful. If we just take him away, then maybe that's enough. And he's cheaper at about $10 million, while O'John and Obi's at $18 million. Offensively, we almost got that one locked up. There's nobody coming close to us. We're also not rebounding as good as I anticipated. So that makes me think that we don't need to kind of focus on that. You know, that was one of our things. Now, we are closing out a ton of defensive possessions with rebounds, which is great. But... Number one team in the league when it comes to rebounding is the, the team that's getting the, you know what I'm saying? They're closing out possessions. And we're close. We're five, fifth. But that's not good enough. We're blocking shots. But the 76ers, I'm sorry, but the Knicks, oh, they don't block shots, huh? Oh, because Vucevic is their center. Right, right, right. They're probably uh, causing turnovers and stuff. They're not even doing that. They're doing it better than us, but it's not like they're elite at that either. Very interesting team to be number one defensively. Okay, so we, we made that team. With Claxton and, and Kessler with the idea of defensive rebound. But, I mean, this man Clax can switch on a perimeter and hold his own at an A-. minus. That's, that's better than Curry. That's better than Bain. That's better than Grimes. No, actually, no. You stand around. I'm sorry, Clax. I don't even know why I question maybe trading you away. Your, your, your defensive impact is there, my boy. We, we recognize and we respond to it. And we, we are appreciative of the defense that you have provided us. But how do we end up taking who do we say we want to take away alice caruso because he's oh we have to do clowny and john wall that's about 10 million so financially we can make that happen 
do we have any draft capital we have zero first round picks zero second round picks so let's go to free agency sign some people and hopefully flip them for late first or a bunch of seconds or whatever it may take we're going to try to take away alice caruso and hope that that small adjustments can can help them fall off i guess first round pick from the lakers thank you jordan goodwin illinois very own we'll take that i mean that might be enough to get alice caruso low-key it's not again it's not like alice caruso's out here uh dogging and i don't even know what the team record is they might even be selling or something i'll give john wall away they got to give us back a player which makes it difficult isaiah roby yeah so now we're over the oh man this is about to be uh more of a pain than it should be we're gonna trade for uh ricky rubio who's making six million and that's that's the money we need to get alice caruso off the team great 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 they're an expensive team though they got what did it say uh we're not getting back enough there okay they're an expensive team they have um kyle Lowry on the team and everything so we just traded for Alex Caruso, but we're going to trade him away. We just wanted him away from the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? We didn't really want him on our team. We didn't. Oh, maybe we should just defense, man. He can help our def defense. But we also did just lose a point guard. So I, I do want to try to figure out if we can replace that. But I don't think so. I think Caruso is going to have to play back up one, which he can't. You know, we've seen him run lead guard here in Chicago before. Uh, so overall, stays the same. So, yeah, Caruso just be our backup point guard. We did sacrifice some offense because John Wall was having a good year. But I think that our offense is so nice that we can afford to sacrifice some offense in exchange for defense. We lose a game, which is not great. The next game, let's let's get back on track, boys. Because we are now 41-6. and six. Like, we are really, really good. Do not get me wrong. But this challenge is not about winning championships. It's about dominating both ends of the floor. And you know what we did not do. And it's not too late because there's plenty of games left changing this stuff defensive focus crash defensive glass is what i want them to do because again we feel good about our offense we also want to limit transition ah you know what you know what crash some get back on others because though we aren't killing it on offensive glasses i, I think it matters maybe a little bit uh, this back-to-back -back games we gave teams 100 points or less so that's pretty good let's close out right before the deadline with another 88 point game given up Let's see, Golden State Warriors, are you going to score a lot or are you not? Oh, they did. And they scored a lot, a lot. Uh, Jabari and uh, Joel. They switched up my lineup. That's why. That's why. Aaron Gordon's great and all, but I want him coming off the bench. I want my bigs to play big minutes. Right, let's hope they don't do that again. Go to the end of the season. I'll be back. Hopefully, we get it done in year one because that will be elite. Wardell, Stephen Curry wins MVP. He was unanimous again. I just added that little wrinkle into it. He was unanimous again. All right. Uh, they got six man and rookie of the year. Oh, snap. I'm in and uh, Victor Wibbenyama going to be kind of nice together. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We were the best team in regular season history, which is dope. Steph Curry, obviously, all NBA. Do we get all defensive players? None. Yikes. Uh, not, a sing not a single one. Okay. So let's go. A moment of truth. Do we have the number one offense and defense? So offense, again, we dominated. We absolutely dominated. We were five, five and a half points above the number two dude. We were great. Defensively, we were the best. We stole Caruso. They fell off. We kept it going. We are number one in offense and defense, ladies and gentlemen. Our, our rating, our rating differential. Come on, man. Come on, man. The best regular season team in history. Did we make a bunch of threes? Yeah, but number five, three-point attempts, we were, ooh, we were efficient with it, huh? We were efficient with it. We didn't take a lot of threes, but we took them, we made them. The offensive rebound, yeah, the offensive rebound didn't end up being that big of a part. We were about league average at that defensive rebound. Did we close out our possessions that second half of the season? The answer is yes. We were only behind the Knicks by point two total rebounding. We were only behind the Knicks, so we did our thing, man. I'm so proud of these boys. I think we put together an immaculate team. This is one of the best regular season teams I've ever put together in 2K24, so this is good. The double big lineup is OP. I'm sorry. It's OP. It's just OP. That's just the way 2K is. A 10 rebounds per game there, 12 rebounds. Oh, wait. That was per 36. Seven rebounds <laughs> and eight and a half rebounds. Still, we did our thing, and of course, as you know, as always, uh, no shenanigans on the play. The championship don't mean a thing to me. But the 96 Bulls did say it don't mean a thing without the ring. So we could be the best regular season team in history. But if we don't win a ring, it don't matter. We are 12-0. Uh, and 0, And we lose one game. But, but Darius Garland wins finals MVP. D Darius Garland led his team to one win. Hold on. Let me look at these stats. Let me, let me look at these playoff stats one more time. Because no way nobody on our team is good enough to... To win it. Steph Curry averaged 25, 5, and 4. 
on good splits. And they talk about give it to the loser. Desmond Bain had a really good series. Mikael Bridges had a really good series. Hold on, let's go look at the, what his numbers were again. He, well, he averaged 27 and 8 on 50, 43, 83. So, so, you lost. <laughs> and we won, and we completed the challenge. You enjoyed the video, leave it a like. I thought it might have taken three years. It only took one because Wardell Stephen Curry's like that. Two-way player. He might have deserved to win DPOY if you ask me. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.